Hello everyone, in this video, I'm going to show to you how to prove this theorem that the sum of the squares of the random variables, which have a standard normal distribution, has a t-squared distribution with n degrees of freedom. The number of degrees of freedom in here, which is n, should be the same with the number of items in here, which is also n. The random variables in here should not only have the same distribution, but also must be independent to each other. Now let us designate the sum of the squares of the random variables by w. Then this w in here should also be a random variable. So what we need to do in here is to prove that this w has this distribution. Now to do that, we need to use the theorem that random variables which have the same moment generating functions have the same distribution. So what we need to do in here is to prove that the moment generating function for w is the same with the moment generating function for random variables which have this distribution. So now let us determine the moment generating function for w. So we have here we know the formula for this one which is the expectation of e raised to wt then let us substitute this for w in here so we have here expectation of e raised to z sub 1 squared plus z sub 2 squared plus z sub 3 squared plus etc until z sub n squared then times t so we have here times t and then from algebra we know that e raised to a plus b is equal to e raised to a times e raised to b and then distributing this t for each term in here and then applying this we have expectation of e raised to z sub 1 squared t times e raised to z sub 2 squared t times e raised to z sub 3 squared t and then times etc until e raised to z sub n squared t and then we know that if we have random variables let's say u and v and if they are independent to each other then the expectation of their product u and v is equal to the product of their expectations so we have here expectation of u times expectation of v and then in here this z sub 1 z sub 2 z sub 3 until z sub n are independent to each other then their functions which are this e raised to z sub 1 squared t this e raised to z sub 2 squared t etc should also be independent to each other then treating these terms in here as random variables and then applying this then we can distribute this expectation for each term in here as was done in here so we have here expectation of e raised to z sub 1 squared t times expectation of e raised to z sub 2 squared t times expectation of e raised to z sub 3 squared t then times etc until expectation of e raised to z sub n squared t and then let us evaluate this so we have here now we know that if we have a function of a random variable let's say x then its expectation is the integral of that function so we have here g of x and then times the probability density function or pdf for this random variable x so we have here 
is PDF and then DX and then for the limits of the integral in here it is the range of values for the random variable X so in here if X is Z1 and G of X is E raised to Z1 squared D and then we have here E raised to Z1 squared D and then times the probability density function for the random variable Z1 and since we know that Z1 has a standard normal distribution then its PDF is for the standard normal distribution which is 1 over square root of 2 pi times e raised to negative z sub 1 squared over 2 and then d z sub 1 and then for the limits of this integral for a random variable which has a standard normal distribution the range of its values is from negative infinity to positive infinity then in here we can move this constant outside of this integral so we have here 1 over square root of 2 pi times the integral of let us combine both exponentials in here using this to this so we have here e raised to let us have a common factor negative z sub 1 squared so we have here negative z sub 1 squared times for this one we have negative t and then for this one we have plus 1 half and then we have here d z sub 1 and then from negative infinity to positive infinity and then to evaluate this integral expression for a Gaussian integral this is a Gaussian integral Now, the value of this one is square root of pi. You can check several references for a Gaussian integral and you can find that its value is square root of pi. And if you want a proof for this one that this integral expression in here has a value is square root of pi, I have a video for that proof and I provided the link in the description below so that you can check it out. So now, in here, to evaluate this one using this, to make it in terms of square root of pi, we need to make this x squared in here and the term in here to be the same. So we need to transform this into in terms of z sub 1 using the transformation function x is equal to z sub 1 times negative t plus 1 half raised to 1 half. So if we square this, it will be equal to this one in here and then if we square this one, it will be the same with this term here. We can also use the negative of this one, but this one is already enough. So now from here, dx will be the derivative of this one. So we have here the constant first, negative t plus one half, raised to one half, and then d z sub one. Then substituting this for this, we have integral of e raised to negative for x squared, it is the square of this. So we have here z sub 1 squared times negative t plus 1 half. And then for dx, we have this. So we have here negative t plus 1 half raised to 1 half and then d z sub 1. Then for the limits of this integral, from here we can have here z sub 1 is equal to x over negative t plus one half raised to one half. Now when x is negative infinity, in here this x will become negative infinity and then for this one, this negative t plus one half, we don't want a imaginary number in here and also we don't want it to be zero. So this negative t plus one half must be greater than zero. And then from here, we can move this negative t on that side. So we have here, t must be less than one half. 
then in here when x is negative infinity in here negative infinity over this constant with this condition it is negative infinity and then when x is positive infinity in here positive infinity over this constant with this condition is also positive infinity so we have here positive infinity and then this one is same with this one so its value is square root of pi and then we can move this constant outside of this integral and then the remaining terms in here is same with this one then this one will be square root of pi over this constant in here so we have here negative t plus one half raised to one half and then for the expectation of e raised to z sub 1 squared t is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi and then times this so we have here times square root of pi then over negative t plus 1 half raised to 1 half and then in here we can cancel out this square root of pi and then the pi inside this square root then in here what remains in here is 2 raised to 1 half and then since they have the same exponent then we can combine them together as raised to 1 half 2 times negative t is negative 2t and then 2 times 1 half is 1 then we can just interchange this negative 2t and plus 1 so we have here 1 minus 2t raised to 1 half then we have now the value for this one so we can put it in there this is 1 over 1 minus 2t raised to 1 half and then for evaluating this term this term in here is similar to this one except that the subscript in here for z is 2 while this one is 1 but they have the same distribution which is a standard normal distribution then they have the same probability density function so it will lead to the same formula which is this one but just different subscript in here and then it will become like this then applying this will result into this same with this one so the value of this one is also this one and then for this one it will be this one also and then etc until this one it will be this one also and then for the value of this one it is equal to this one being multiplied n times so now we can write it below the moment generating function for w is equal to 1 over 1 minus 2t raised to 1 half b multiplied n times and then 1 raised to n is 1 and then this raised to n is 1 minus 2t raised to n over 2 let's say we have here a random variable for a g-squared distribution with degrees of freedom in here n this has a g-squared distribution with n degrees of freedom same with the subscript in here you can check from several references that its moment generating function is equal to 1 over 1 minus 2t raised to its degrees of freedom which is n so we have the n over 2 now if you want a proof for this one or rather the derivation of the moment generating function for a g squared distribution i have a video for that and i provided the link in the description below so that you can check it out so now comparing this one to this one then the moment generating function for w 
is the same with the moment generating function for this random variable in here, then their distribution should be the same. And since this random variable in here has this distribution, then this w must also has this distribution. So we have here g squared with n degrees of freedom. Then from here, we have proven that this w which is equal to this has this distribution which is a g squared distribution with n degrees of freedom. So this proves this theorem and ends this video. So I hope you learned a lot from this video and to the next video as well. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe in my channel.